Hello and welcome to the Education in Smart Biomedical Engineering channel. I'm your host and today we're diving into the fascinating world of the circulatory. Whether you're a student of biomedical engineering, a healthcare professional, or simply someone interested in learning more about the human body, this video is for you. So sit back, grab a notebook, and let's dive into the world of the circulatory system. Here is the Today Outlook. The circulatory system refers to the system in the human body that is responsible for distributing blood, oxygen, and nutrients to various tissues and organs, and for removing waste products. The main purpose of the circulatory system is to deliver oxygen and nutrients to the cells and tissues of the body and to remove waste products from them. This ensures that all cells and tissues in the body have access to the resources they need to function properly. Blood plays a crucial role in the circulatory system by transporting oxygen, nutrients, and waste products between the heart, the cells and tissues of the body, and the lungs. Components in the human blood, plasma, blood cells There are three type of blood cells. They are, red blood cells, RBCs, comma, white blood cells, WBCs, platelets, plasma is a yellowish fluid that makes up about 55% of the total volume of blood and contains nutrients, hormones, and waste products. Red blood cells carry oxygen to the cells and tissues, while white blood cells help to fight infections. Platelets are involved in the process of blood clotting. Let's discuss more deeply about these. There are several types of plasma proteins in the human body, including albumin. Albumin is the most abundant plasma protein and is involved in regulating fluid balance and transporting substances such as hormones and fatty acids. Globulins. Globulins are a group of plasma proteins that play important roles in the immune system including the production of antibodies, the transport of hormones, and the removal of waste products from the body. Fibrinogen. Fibrinogen is a plasma protein that is involved in the process of blood clotting. It is converted to fibrin, which forms the basis of a blood clot. Factor 8. Factor 8 is a plasma protein that is involved in blood clotting process. Red blood cells, RBCs, or erythrocytes, they transport oxygen throughout the body. Cytoplasm of RBC contains hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is an iron containing molecule where oxygen binds to this molecule and transported to all regions. Lifespan of RBC is 120 days. It is broken down in the liver or spleen. Red blood cells carry oxygen to the cells and tissues. White blood cells, also known as leukocytes, are part of the immune system in the human body and play a critical role in defending against disease and infection. They are produced in the bone marrow and circulate in the bloodstream. The following are the main types of white blood cells in the human body, neutrophils, eosinophil, basophil, monocytes, and lymphocytes. Neutrophils. Neutrophils are the most abundant type of white blood cells and are involved in the initial response to bacterial infections. They are the first cells to arrive at the site of infection and engulf the invading microorganisms. Lymphocytes. Lymphocytes are white blood cells that play a key role in the adaptive immune response. They include T cells, which recognize and destroy infected cells, and B cells, which produce antibodies to neutralize pathogens. Monocytes. Monocytes are white blood cells that play a role in the innate immune response. They mature into macrophages, which engulf and digest invading microorganisms. Eosinophils. Eosinophils are white blood cells that play a role in the immune response to parasitic infections and allergies. Basophils. Basophils are a type of white blood cell that play a role in the immune response to allergies and in the regulation of inflammation. Overall, white blood cells play a crucial role in protecting the body from harmful microorganisms and maintaining a healthy immune system. Blood platelets, also known as thrombocytes, are small, irregularly shaped cells that play a critical role in blood clotting and the prevention of bleeding. Platelets are produced in the bone marrow and are released into the bloodstream to help prevent bleeding from damaged blood vessels. When a blood vessel is damaged, platelets adhere to the exposed area and form a clot to stop the bleeding. This process is known as primary hemostasis. 
Platelets release chemicals that attract other platelets and promote the formation of a clot. They also release factors that promote blood clotting and help to prevent excessive bleeding. In addition to their role in blood clotting, platelets also play a role in inflammation and wound healing. They release growth factors that promote the growth of new blood vessels and the repair of damaged tissues. In some cases, platelets can also contribute to the formation of harmful clots that can obstruct blood flow and lead to serious health conditions such as stroke and deep vein thrombosis. Overall, platelets play a crucial role in maintaining the health of the circulatory system by promoting normal blood clotting and preventing excessive bleeding, as well as promoting wound healing and inflammation. Just have a closer look at the diagrams here. Figure 1 shows how oxygenated blood and deoxygenated blood flow through our body. Figure 2 shows the labeled diagram of the human heart. Overview of circulatory system. The circulatory system consists of the heart, blood vessels, and blood. The heart pumps blood through the blood vessels, which include arteries, veins, and capillaries. The blood carries oxygen and nutrients to the cells and tissues, and waste products back to the heart for removal from the body. Lungs works as an oxygenator. It removes carbon dioxide from deoxygenated or dirty blood, adds oxygen to the blood to make it oxygenated or pure blood. Arteries. Arteries are blood vessels that carry oxygen-rich blood away from the heart and distribute it to the rest of the body. A central hole of arteries, called the lumen, carries oxygenated blood, except pulmonary artery because pulmonary artery carries deoxygenated blood from right ventricle to the lungs. The arterial wall is composed of several layers of tissue that work together to maintain the structure and function of the blood vessel. The following are the main layers of the arterial wall, tunica intima, the innermost layer of the arterial wall, the tunica intima, is composed of a thin layer of smooth muscle cells and an inner layer of endothelium, which is the layer of cells that line the interior of the blood vessel. Tunica media. The tunica media is the middle layer of the arterial wall and is composed of smooth muscle cells and elastic fibers. The smooth muscle cells in this layer are responsible for controlling the diameter of the blood vessel and regulating blood flow. Tunica adventitia. The outermost layer of the arterial wall, the tunica adventitia, is composed of connective tissue and collagen fibers. This layer provides structural support to the blood vessel and helps to anchor the vessel in place. Overall, the layers of the arterial wall work together to maintain the strength and stability of the blood vessel, regulate blood flow, and prevent the formation of blood clots. The different layers also play important roles in the response to injury and the healing of damaged blood vessels. Veins Veins are blood vessels that carry oxygen-poor blood back to the heart from the rest of the body. The vein wall, like the arterial wall, is composed of several layers of tissue that work together to maintain the structure and function of the blood vessel. The following are the main layers of the vein wall. Tunica intima the innermost layer of the vein wall, the tunica intima, is composed of a thin layer of smooth muscle cells and an inner layer of endothelium, which is the layer of cells that line the interior of the blood vessel, tunica media. The tunica media is the middle layer of the vein wall and is composed of smooth muscle cells and connective tissue. The smooth muscle cells in this layer play a role in controlling the diameter of the blood vessel and regulating blood flow. Tunica adventitia. The outermost layer of the vein wall, the tunica adventitia, is composed of connective tissue and collagen fibers. This layer provides structural support to the blood vessel and helps to anchor the vessel in place. Overall, the layers of the vein wall work together to maintain the strength and stability of the blood vessel, regulate blood flow, and prevent the formation of blood clots. Unlike the arterial wall, the tunica media in the vein wall is generally less thick and less elastic, as veins do not need to withstand the high pressure that is present in arteries. The different layers of the vein wall also play important roles in the response to injury and the healing of damaged blood vessels. Capillaries Capillaries are tiny blood vessels that connect arteries and veins. They allow the exchange of oxygen, nutrients, 
and waste products between the blood and the cells and tissues of the body. Capillaries are the smallest and most numerous blood vessels in the circulatory system. They are the link between the arterial and venous systems and play a critical role in the exchange of oxygen, nutrients, and waste products between the blood and the tissues. Capillaries are so small that they are only one cell thick, which allows for the diffusion of oxygen and other substances across their walls. The walls of the capillaries are composed of a single layer of endothelial cells, which are tightly packed together to form a continuous layer. Capillaries play a key role in the delivery of oxygen and nutrients to the tissues, as well as the removal of waste products, such as carbon dioxide, from the tissues. The walls of the capillaries are semi-permeable, which allows for the exchange of these substances between the blood and the tissues. Capillaries are also involved in the regulation of blood flow and the control of blood pressure. The smooth muscle cells in the walls of the capillaries can constrict or dilate to regulate blood flow, and the pressure in the capillaries can help to control the pressure in the rest of the circulatory system. Overall, capillaries play a crucial role in the functioning of the circulatory system, as they provide a direct link between the blood and the tissues and are responsible for the exchange of oxygen, nutrients, and waste products. At the arterial end, oxygen diffuses from the red blood cells, nutrient molecules diffuse from the plasma, into the tissues, at the venous end, carbon dioxide and other waste products diffuse out, carbon dioxide removed from the lungs, other waste products filtered and removed via the kidney. Anatomy of the human heart externally the human heart is a roughly cone-shaped organ and it is clenched fist size. That is located in the chest, between the lungs, behind the sternum, and slightly to the left of the midline. It is surrounded by the pericardium, a sac that contains a small amount of fluid and helps to protect the heart. The pericardium is a sac that surrounds the heart and protects it from physical damage. It is composed of two layers, the fibrous pericardium and the serous pericardium. The fibrous pericardium is the outermost layer of the pericardium and is composed of dense connective tissue. It provides a strong and rigid structure that helps to protect the heart from physical trauma and to keep it in place within the chest. The serous pericardium slash visceral, the pericardium is a sac that surrounds the heart and protects it from physical damage. It is composed of two layers, the fibrous pericardium and the serous pericardium. The fibrous pericardium is the outermost layer of the pericardium and is composed of dense connective tissue. It provides a strong and rigid structure that helps to protect the heart from physical trauma and to keep it in place within the chest. The serous pericardium is the inner layer of the pericardium and is composed of a thin, slippery membrane that surrounds the heart. This layer is divided into two parts, the parietal layer, which is in contact with the fibrous pericardium, and the visceral layer, which is in direct contact with the heart. The space between the two layers of the serous pericardium is known as the pericardial cavity, and it contains a small amount of fluid that helps to lubricate the heart and reduce friction between it and the pericardium. Overall, the pericardium plays a critical role in the functioning of the heart by protecting it from physical damage, keeping it in place within the chest, and reducing friction between the heart and the surrounding tissues. The pericardium also plays a role in regulating the pressure within the heart and in preventing fluid accumulation around the heart. Is the inner layer of the pericardium and is composed of a thin, slippery membrane that surrounds the heart. This layer is divided into two parts, the parietal layer, which is in contact with the fibrous pericardium, and the visceral layer. The heart has three layers of tissue that work together to maintain its structure and function. These layers are, epicardium, this is the outermost layer of the heart and is composed of connective tissue that provides protection and support for the heart, myocardium, the myocardium is the middle layer of the heart and is composed of muscle tissue that is responsible for contracting and relaxing to pump blood.
Endocardium, the innermost layer of the heart, the endocardium, is composed of a thin layer of smooth muscle cells and an inner layer of endothelium, which is the layer of cells that line the interior of the heart. The endocardium helps to prevent blood clots and promote the smooth flow of blood through the heart. These three layers of the heart work together to maintain the structure and function of the heart and to ensure that blood is pumped efficiently and effectively to the rest of the body. The layers also play important roles in the response to injury and the healing of damaged heart tissue. The heart is divided into two main blood supplies, the coronary circulation, which supplies blood to the heart muscle, and the systemic circulation, which supplies blood to the rest of the body. Coronary circulation is responsible for providing oxygen and nutrients to the heart muscle and is made up of two main arteries, the left coronary artery and the right coronary artery. These arteries originate from the aorta, which is the main blood vessel that carries oxygenated blood from the heart to the rest of the body. Overall, the cardiac veins play a critical role in the circulation of blood within the heart and are essential for maintaining the health and function of the heart muscle. They work together with the heart's other circulatory systems, such as the arteries and the coronary circulation to ensure the efficient and effective delivery of blood to the heart and to the rest of the body. Anatomy of the human heart Internally, the heart is divided into four chambers, the right atrium and ventricle, and the left atrium and ventricle. The atria are the upper chambers of the heart and are responsible for receiving blood from the body. The ventricles are the lower chambers of the heart and are responsible for pumping blood to the body and lungs. The superior vena cava, SVC, is a large vein located in the chest that returns deoxygenated blood from the upper body, including the head, neck, arms, and upper torso, back to the heart. The SVC enters the right atrium of the heart, where the blood is oxygenated before being pumped out to the rest of the body. The inferior vena cava, IVC, is a large vein located in the abdomen that returns deoxygenated blood from the lower body including the legs, abdomen, and pelvis, back to the heart. The IVC enters the right atrium of the heart, where the blood is oxygenated before being pumped out to the rest of the body. The pulmonary artery carries deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle of the heart to the lungs, where the blood is oxygenated. The pulmonary artery branches into smaller arteries that distribute the blood to the alveoli, where oxygen is exchanged with carbon dioxide, the pulmonary vein carries oxygenated blood from the lungs back to the heart. There are four pulmonary veins, two from each lung, which enter the left atrium of the heart. The aorta is the largest and main artery in the body, originating from the left ventricle of the heart and carrying oxygen-rich blood to the rest of the body. The aorta branches into smaller arteries that supply oxygen-rich blood to the brain, heart, arms, legs, and other organs. The left side of the heart, including the left atrium and left ventricle, pumps oxygenated blood to the rest of the body through the aorta. The left atrium receives oxygenated blood from the lungs via the pulmonary veins and pumps it into the left ventricle, which then contracts and pumps the oxygenated blood into the aorta and to the rest of the body. The heart is composed of four valves. They prevents backflow of blood. The valves are mainly divided into two categories, they are atrioventricular valves and semilunar valves. The four types of valves are tricuspid valve, bicuspid or mitral valve comes under the atrioventricular valves. Pulmonary valve, aortic valve comes under the semilunar valves. The mitral valve, also known as the bicuspid valve, is located between the left atrium and left ventricle and allows oxygen-rich blood to flow from the left atrium into the left ventricle. When the left ventricle contracts, the mitral valve closes to prevent blood from flowing back into the left atrium. The tricuspid valve is located between the right atrium and right ventricle and allows deoxygenated blood to flow from the right atrium into the right ventricle. When the right ventricle contracts, the tricuspid valve closes to prevent blood from flowing back into the right atrium. The aortic valve is located between the left ventricle and the aorta and allows oxygen-rich blood to flow from the left ventricle into the aorta and to the rest of the body. 
When the left ventricle relaxes, the aortic valve closes to prevent blood from flowing back into the left ventricle. The pulmonary valve is located between the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery and allows deoxygenated blood to flow from the right ventricle into the pulmonary artery and to the lungs. When the right ventricle relaxes, the pulmonary valve closes to prevent blood from flowing back into the right ventricle. Each valve in the heart has a set of flaps, cusps, that open and close to regulate the flow of blood. The opening and closing of the heart valves is controlled by pressure differences within the heart and is synchronized with the contraction and relaxation of the heart chambers. Circulation through the heart happens in three phases. They are phase 1, pulmonary circulation, phase 2, purification, and phase 3, systematic circulation. Let us look deep into these phases. In the flow chart, SVC is referred to as superior vena cave, IVC referred as inferior vena cave. Phase 1, pulmonary circulation. Pulmonary circulation is the flow of blood from the heart to the lungs and back to the heart. The right ventricle of the heart contracts and pumps oxygen-poor blood to the lungs where it is oxygenated. This oxygenated blood then returns to the heart through the pulmonary veins, which lead to the left atrium. Different valves, the pulmonary circulation is controlled by the tricuspid valve and the pulmonary valve. The tricuspid valve separates the right atrium and right ventricle, while the pulmonary valve separates the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery. Phase 2, Purification in the lungs, the oxygen-poor blood is purified by exchanging carbon dioxide for oxygen. The carbon dioxide is expelled and the oxygen is absorbed into the bloodstream. Phase 2, Systematic Circulation Systematic circulation is the flow of oxygenated blood from the heart to the rest of the body and back to the heart. The left ventricle contracts and pumps oxygenated blood to the rest of the body through the aorta the largest artery in the body. This oxygenated blood is distributed to the various organs and tissues, supplying them with the necessary oxygen and nutrients. Different valves, the systematic circulation is controlled by the bicuspid valve, also known as the mitral valve, and the aortic valve. The bicuspid valve separates the left atrium and left ventricle, while the aortic valve separates the left ventricle and the aorta. The oxygenated blood then returns to the heart through the veins, which lead to the right atrium. The heart then repeats the process, pumping oxygen-rich blood to the lungs and then to the rest of the body. The electrophysiology of the heart refers to the electrical activity that is generated and conducted within the heart, which controls the heart's rhythm and contractions. The heart is comprised of specialized cells known as pacemaker cells, which generate electrical impulses that travel throughout the heart and regulate the heart's rhythm. These electrical impulses are generated by ion channels in the pacemaker cells, which allow the flow of charged particles, ions, into and out of the cells, creating a change in the electrical potential of the cells. These electrical impulses then travel along specialized pathways within the heart, known as the conduction system, which includes the sinoatrial, SA, node, the atrioventricular, AV, node, the bundle of his, and the Purkinje fibers. The SA node is located in the right atrium and is the natural pacemaker of the heart, generating electrical impulses that set the heart's rhythm. The AV node is located in the atrioventricular septum and regulates the flow of electrical impulses from the atria to the ventricles. The bundle of his and the Purkinje fibers are specialized pathways that conduct electrical impulses from the AV node to the ventricles, coordinating the contractions of the atria and ventricles. This diagram shows the electrophysiology of the human heart. The electrical activity of the heart can be measured and recorded using an electrocardiogram ECG, which provides important information about the heart's rhythm and electrical activity. Abnormalities in the electrophysiology of the heart can lead to various heart rhythm disorders, such as atrial fibrillation or ventricular tachycardia, which can be harmful to the health of the heart and the rest of the body. Overall, the electrophysiology of the heart plays a crucial role in controlling the heart's rhythm and contractions, 
and is essential for maintaining the health and function of the heart and the entire circulatory system.